Hello, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. Today I'm going to share with you guys good old King Cal Elusives. It's a very strong and powerful deck. It's been relevant for a very long time. Got a few extra additions, few minor tweaks in this list in particular. I found this one super interesting and I really wanted to share it. This is actually um, a Dogs King Cow Elusives, which features Misfortune and a couple of interesting cards. So let's jump across and have a quick look at them. Just before we do that, I just would like to add that I am streaming over on Twitch Friday to Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. AEDT time. Feel free to come follow me and check me out. You'll find the link in the description. Thank you. So without a doubt, first of all, the most important card to look at is King Cow Wayfinder, hence the whole King Cow theme. Uh, so this is an allegiance buff that will summon units from your deck, one cost specifically. And that would be the due to the fact that we have a bunch of uh, cheap elusive units that can help to push down our opponents. This is kind of like a semi-aggressive, semi kind of combo deck where you can set your board up for a pretty big swing that can sometimes end the game. Some of the new additions here, obviously, it's going to be Misfortune, as I just mentioned. I like it. I think it's interesting. I think it's fun throwing your opponents off guard. And sometimes the fact that when we're attacking, the deal one to battling enemies, it makes it for awkward moments when in your opponent decides to block. So that's a pretty cool addition. It's a 3 mana 3 3 that kind of helps to pressure your opponent, which goes along with this deck because, like, it's all about pressure, really. Some of the cool additions here would be the Prowling Cutthroat. Does go very nicely alongside the King Cow Wayfinder. This is a, a one mana 1-1 one, one with Elusive and Fearsome. The Fearsome can sometimes be relevant, especially if we decide to buff that with some of our buffs and our opponent wants to cheap block it with like Shadow Assassin or something. So this can be quite strong. We'll come back over to the top end and work our way down. So the Windfarer Hatchling, kind of just a 7 mana game winning Elusive unit that can sometimes buff your board. This kind of suits, we got the elusive tags, whole bunch of elusive stuff going on. So this is like your top end. You can sometimes end the game prior to this and sometimes this will just end the game as its own stats. I think the fact that this is elusive makes it the most relevant. If it didn't have elusive, you probably wouldn't play this. Jewel Protector can just make for good buffs on key units, especially landing it onto a life blade can sometimes help you against aggressive decks as well as just continuing the tempo you're developing wall buffing and the keep pressuring and it keeps building you'll oftentimes find yourself buffing an elusive unit just to guarantee more damage smacking him in the face will of ionia because will of ionia is a pretty crazy card and it's just it, we're in ionia so we run will of ionia <laughs> King Cow Wayfinder as I mentioned uh, Life Blade Elusive plus Life Steal it's kind of relevant um, this deck can sometimes get a little bit run over by aggressive but not too bad like we can like we kind of have a similar game plan where we just ignore the board state oftentimes and rely on elusives to just end our opponent quicker than they can burn us so Life Blade can make for a good switch up plan where you hit Jewel Protector onto it or you just buff it with like twin disciplines to try kind of hit that life steal consistently. It has elusive too, so that's kind of the whole theme of this. Double deny. We have a pretty linear strategy, so sometimes we find deny to be quite useful. You'll probably see some examples in these games coming up that the, the deny deny is a pretty crazy card. And I think in a very linear strategy like this, having two can be quite useful. This could be bumped down to one and maybe put another Will of Ionia in. It really comes down to preference and what you feel more comfortable playing and how much you value certain cards. I value Deny as a 12 in this list. I guess so does Dog. So I do agree with that there. I think I'm a bit concerned about the two Will of Ionias, but at the same time, usually the games will be over before you draw into three of them and they can be kind of clunky as multiples in the hand when you're playing a more aggressive strategy. Twin Disciplines helps for protecting units, helps for pushing damage. This kind of goes along with the theme of its deck. I think Twin Disciplines finds more value in a list that runs a lot of elusive units. You can abuse it a lot more. So Twin Disciplines finds a home as a three of. This is definitely a powerful card. So I don't think they'll ever change as well as long as elusives are around or unless something else comes out. It's a bit more of a power creep card. Shadow Assassin, there's pretty minimum cycle in this deck. So Shadow Assassin finds that value. Uh, helps you consistently get towards your Wayfinder quicker, which can also help to thin out your deck. It's elusive, it fits along with this card uh, deck and it fits into so many decks that Shadow Assassin is simply just a very strong card on its own, doesn't require much synergy. So a card like this always finds a home in most Ionia lists. And then we talked about Misfortune, 
just to kind of refresh what we mentioned i think the fact that it deals one dambling one damage to battling enemies in the nexus kind of helps at the same time like this is definitely a, a change interchangeable card but i think because we're splashing into bilge water already for cutthroat which seems to be really powerful for this list maybe misfortune is just quite as powerful as well i think it helps for as i said setting up better trades it's a pretty cool card. I like it. I like the addition of it. I wouldn't. I'd have to probably take a bigger sample size to really judge for myself how powerful it is. But I like it. Now the card of the day that I really do like, though, without a doubt, is this retreat addition into the elusives list. I think this card has come in clutch more times than I could count. I had a few games here, and I just found retreat doing so much for this list. It's just actually insane. I like. I really like this addition. It's. You can do so many flexible things with it. You can oftentimes use it just to buff up your uh, Green Glade Duo for turns. You can obviously find value from it with Blade Scout, being able to give it uh, elusive again, denying your opponent's removal, uh, getting value from Shadow Assassin. Uh, you can even get value from uh, Wayfinder if you really feel like that's the need. You can return, retreat your key cards. Uh, this, this, this card's insane. I won't go into too much detail about it, but you just have to find the right moments where this finds decent tempo play because it's all about the tempo really you want to kind of use this to do something very valuable at the time so oftentimes you will find yourself using it alongside some of the cheaper units to get more cycle or more relevancy or protecting green glade duo can be quite good as well uh green glade duo is probably one of the standout cards in this list as well this will be one of your key units for just really pressuring uh mid-range and control decks You'll kind of need this like let's say you're versing bannerman this card is insane and if they have a single combat then that's a bit unlucky but uh you can oftentimes protect it with twin disciplines or retreat at that point that's where retreat finds a lot more value denying your opponent's cards Browning cutthroat i like this addition makes sense it's a one mana one one with elusive and fearsome it's great and blade scout you know for the fact that we are running wayfinder and this, the Blade Scout works as it does. And when it does come down during uh, the initial turn, it comes out of Wayfinder, it will have Elusive as well because it counts as a summon. That wraps up the deck list there. We'll jump over now and have a few games here. We kind of just really, this deck is really strong. Like this might not be tier one, but in the right hands, you can really punish a ladder environment with this deck. I really like the list. I hope you guys too enjoy the games and I will see you tomorrow. I'll keep the MF. I mean, that's what it's here for. If was fun, I'll probably play it later off stream. I don't think I even played a cutthroat here. There's like a ton of answers you could have. I'm gonna pass for now. I think holding on to spell mana is not as good for this list, so that may have been a mistake not developing earlier into the board. Regardless, we're going to play King Cow Wayfinder next turn. First step, the hardest. Please run into Withering Whale.
Awesome. Get the drop on him. I guess we'll attack. So Assassin's pretty chill. I don't want to invest too much resources right now. Hang on, Fuzzball. Green Glade. And then we'll probably play Wayfinder next turn. I mean, he could be sitting on Balfi, Static Shock, a few answers to actually clear. I don't expect this Green Glade to even survive. I need to keep putting pressure on him though, and I think I skipped down at doing that the first few turns. Reserving Spell Mana is not as effective. We haven't got like Elixirs of Iron and stuff. We have Twin Disciplines, but we didn't seem to find them, so here we are. I'm going to attempt to play the Green Glade once again. Extra hands never hurt. If he has another Withering Whale, unlucky. We can deal with that. We'll attack. We should probably use a Drill Protector to start playing big units. I'm gonna buff the uh, Ashling. Pretty weak to Ruination if I go ahead and play the Hatchling here, so I'm not a big fan of it. If he plays it, then I don't have much damage after that. I'm gonna play Zed here. It's a bit more conservative. I have Twin Disciplines, do a few tricks. I pretty much will lose the game straight up to Ruination. I will buff set obviously. I'd like to give him a chance to attack. Vengeance? Sure. Fortune favors the bold. They'll never see me coming! We'll swing. Well, we should have swung with everything there. Might have had lethal. Not quite. Let's see what he does next turn. If he like plays Lidros or something like that. I'm gonna hope that he low rolls here a little bit. He didn't. Definitely not low roll. Hell of a day. So now I need to play Shadow Assassin. Pretty good find.
That's all of his mana. I actually could have just played that there, but I wouldn't have found any value from the should I be? pass. We have deny. I could block a ruination. That denies a crazy fine and those double returns were insane. I think this is my best line. This is the only line. And me not playing this before kind of brought me a little bit more time. I had to be a little bit conservative because if I just play right into a ruination the game's over. If he drops like a vengeance here, I think I win. I win. So I'm not sure. I didn't check where that come from. I think I come from the far right. So he may have just drew into it. But regardless, the game's over. Powerful stuff. Look at us. Come on the ladder, dude. <laughs> when they lose, they Shen emote. Yeah, that was kind of random. I don't think you're supposed to use the um, Shen emote on the defensive. When they win, they Braum. I, f I feel like Braum is like when you've easy clapped them and you feel like you're the best. When you're so sure you've won, you drop the Braum. I drop the shin when I make a, a four head play usually. Five head, sorry. So this is Bannerman with a splash of Vi and Boom Crew Rookie. We could just ignore his board. I think this is a matchup where like the one drops are a little bit more relevant. I think I throw back these two. I want to keep a Wayfinder because it's going to be really good on curve. Hope to find a one drop. Unfortunately not, but what can you do? Maybe if he has the Fleetwood Tracker, that's going to be a little bit annoying. But I don't think I should be playing around it. Double Wayfind is pretty expensive in the opening hand. Sithria is fine. I can do a Sith. I can deal with Sithria. I feel as if throwing back the Shadow Assassin may have been a mistake on my behalf in terms of the Mulligan. I didn't expect to draw this poorly. Let's move. Like dodging the uh, three drop here is so detrimental to our tempo. I can gain back some life steal here though. If he slow plays, I can hit him up with a Wayfinder. Have fun. Love you. So he allowed me to slow play. I'm pretty happy about that. It means I can put up some cheap blockers. <laughs> I could almost, I could always just protect my units. Honestly. Whoa! Is he ending the round? I will take that for sure, dude. What do I do here? We want to pop off with of elusives. I feel like I can go like Wayfinder and just push a lot of damage this turn. I miss out on one unit. Eyes open. Watch the That's fine. I could also retreat and replay something. I want to push a little bit more damage. Uh, I think we're supposed to chill for now. And then look to push the damage next turn. We just have to survive his onslaught next turn. That's all. Ooh. 
weird place. That's pretty greedy of him to actually single combat with the weaker unit. It plays right into twin disciplines. I'd have to argue that may have been a mistake. At least it forces him to drop more resources now. That was really random. That's really greedy. But we'll be passing for now. That turn that he didn't swing, I think may have cost him a lot of tempo and pressure. I'm not sure why he didn't. Like, I don't know, maybe he's got a plan that I'm not aware of. Uh, opportunity to get, we'll probably play Jewel Protector onto Life Blade. I feel as if the scale finds a little bit more value in terms of retreat. So I'm actually going to block with the Wayfinder for now. I've already played double Wayfinder, so the amount of units that we've drawn from the deck is quite high. And we've hit the scouts, we've hit the uh, cutthroats. And I think we already have one in hand. So we're not going to actually hit any more. So retreating a Wayfinder is not as good. Retreating a scout can be good. I'll block here. And then we'll decide how much damage I can actually tank next turn. We could play a Jewel Protector for now. We're going to hit the Life Blade. He'll probably be able to end the game next turn. He dropped a single combat on his uh, Scythria, which is really greedy, and he had no other play above it. So what does that mean for us? He's going to most likely challenge the Green Glade. So I can, go, I can do a cheesy play where I buff the Green Glade. And then he's forced to not challenge it. But should I wait till he actually does it? I think no matter what, he's always going to challenge. I can't replay the unit actually. So the best I can do is to just play a scout now. This feels kind of really bad though. I'm not sure if it's correct. It's probably not correct. I think I just sacrificed the green glade. Weird. Can I afford to go down a bit lower on HP? Why is he not hitting the green glade? That's insane. Let's grab back the Nibori Blade Scout. <laughs> He runs Zorn. Yeah, so this is a Demacia with a splash of Vi and Boom Crew Rookie. I guess he gets the Ranger's Resolve value, but that's not much value if I'm being honest. Seems like a really bad turn to do that. If I'm being honest. That's a pretty insane find. So I think I could just end the game now. If he puts himself in a position where he's under single combat mana, then like I know that I just buff like something. You're covered. If I play anything else, I cannot use twin disciplines. Okay, let's say he has single combat and I go for the open attack. I go for the attack right now. He single combats the life blade. Like basically he needs to need single combat. And if not, I've got him. I have to play play scout. And if he single combats the uh, green glade or the thing, I can just hit him up with the other one. So I wonder if I just do this. How much damage is this pushing? Okay, 
okay, it's over. <laughs> Jesus. I was sitting there thinking about that turn so much, but like we were always going to lose to single combat. At least not lose, but that turn we would have been bummed out. Pretty insane deck. Can't beat old school King Cow. That's for sure. Okay, another Bannerman. Keeping a curve seems reasonable. Do I keep both? Not sure. Might be the same guy, it is the same guy. I just saw his name then. This kind of guarantees some chip damage. He passes there, like, I guess... I'm gonna drop this, get two damage. That's a win for us. So now... Wait, why is he floating that much mana? Did he miss all the drops? What makes more sense to drop here? The Zed or the Misfortune? We're dropping one of these. I think Zed just uh, is strictly a little bit better. I think the quick attack on Zed is going to help us next turn. I can't replay it. Maybe I didn't need to do anything there. That was probably a mistake. You sometimes run into the same guy in normal matches. Actually, I can just... I can let this happen. Zed feels good here. I hate to see a three mana four four right about now. <laughs> Strength in grace, beauty in the blade. Yeah, I don't. That's weird how like he didn't he just killed the Zed. That was it. What the hell is happening right now? Oh, he wants to get unyielding spirit onto it. Is he got the Garen? No, he's got the Vi. What is happening? So we're definitely dropping Jewel Protector this turn. He has either had the worst draws or he's doing something I am just not aware about. Kind of wanted to buff the uh, Zed, but we can't do that right now. Might as well run by and Garen, maybe. He wants to put on Yielding Spirit onto Vi uh, Miss uh, Fiora though. I think maybe I'm just supposed to chill for now, let the turn pass through. I don't really need to promote Jewel Protector as a blocker. He's going to attack, so I don't need to do anything right now. So he leaves him on Repost value. Okay, now I will play Jewel Protector. I'm gonna ignore this attack. I'm gonna retreat. He may single combat. And we should replace it. Does he? If he runs Judgment as a single copy of, I can will the Fiora, so that's fine. I have no time for fools. No closer. That's one unyielding spirit out the way. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Wait, retreat is so good in elusive OTK. Maybe. I don't think we would see it in the, the, the elusive OTK just wants to pretty much land the standalone and then win the game. I don't think you even have time for retreat. It's more of a value card, which I don't think standalone really cares much for. 
Retreat, however, is good in a traditional elusives deck. That's without a doubt. Really liking Dog's List here. I don't know, like, it just throws people off guard, maybe, that we're just using Zed and MF. Just playing elusives. The Retreat has been coming in clutch over and over. Hello, so you made it towards the end of the video. I just want to say again, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, that is incredible. It means the world to me. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, would you please be kind enough to leave a like? Or if you have any questions or have any feedback, uh, please leave a comment. I am constantly responding to them. I'm reading them and I'm taking it all in. It means a lot to me, guys. All right, that'll be it. Catch you in the next one.